Civilization 6 or Civ 6 is a wonderful 4x strategy game and in this video I'm going to hopefully help you by the end of it win more games and in general just do better. Using these tips on screen and time cards below I'm going to walk you through the ultimate strategy for building the best early game possible using universal tips from civics and policies through to governments, how to build an army, successfully defend and grow your economy. Without any mucking around let's jump straight in. Tip number one is about policy cards and governing with power. In particular I want to draw your attention here to political philosophy. It's a civic in the civics tree unlocked fairly early on and boosted by meeting three city-states. What does it do? Well players new and old will know that this is what the initial government looks like perhaps minus a military card slot. It's pretty bare. But when you get political philosophy you can change. To change your government structure to oligarchy, classical republic and with a cheeky subscribe maybe even autocracy. You don't need to fully understand these words but what you do need to know is that this will drastically change every aspect of your game. You should ideally beeline towards political philosophy here in the civics tree, maybe even skipping over some of those earlier civics. You don't need to complete every single one. Once you unlock political philosophy you'll be able to choose a government structure. They're all very good. Autocracy is generally good, classical republic has more of a city building economic focus while oligarchy is great for early offense or defense. In this case I'm playing as Germany so I've taken oligarchy to build on my strength of having a powerful military and I'd recommend you do the same for the plus four combat strength whether you're defending or striking your foes. Speaking of foes, tip number two is about making friends, trade, alliances and maybe even some deception along the way. Early allies, even if you just have one or even if they're just your friend, are incredibly valuable in Civilization 6 and while you might spend most of the game beating on the AI there will be the odd moment where you'll need a friend. Maybe you're trying to leverage them for better trade deals or maybe you're trying to use them as an ally to take down somebody in the middle of the pack. Trade is another important thing here and through currency and celestial navigation in the tech tree you can access more trade routes. You can trade internally to grow your cities or, like I'm doing here, send some envoys to some city-states and start to trade with them as well. Don't forget you can also use city-states as potential allies and trade partners or targets for your warfare. By building up friendly allies, trade uh partners, potentially even some future foes that you could backstab, you're going to have a strong foundation to offend, to defend city-states that will work with you and ultimately maybe even move yourself towards some more late game politics. Don't forget that these early alliances and early trade deals will snowball as you get better civics, as you build more districts like I'm trying to do here in my cities. Setting up an early advantage and crucially defending your allies, cities and trade routes will pay dividends as you move through the game into future elements, aspects and errors. Speaking of that I think now we should turn our attention towards my third and maybe most important point and that is your troops, your armies. How do you defend, explore and pillage in Civilization 6? Because Civ 6 like any other 4x historical strategy game requires throughout the game that you really do have an army. Here you can see the first use case for an army defending against barbarians. Not only are they a pain in the backside, not only could they destroy your early game scouting units or threaten your weak civilian units like your traders or settlers, but they'll also pillage your land like you can see they've done here where my archer is standing. Incredibly frustrating. You may also choose to then take your army out on the offense to remove barbarian encampments like I'm doing here or potentially explore the land and find new places. Don't forget though that you will need a defensive force around your cities because barbarians or enemy players, whether you're in Civ 6 multiplayer or Civilization 6's single player campaign or gameplay modes, you're gonna need to defend your cities. In general here and some extra tips for experts, I quite like to have ranged units. Like I'm doing here in Arkan, you can hide them behind your cities once you get walls, that's even better, and fire at your enemy in a relatively defendable position. In general I recommend 
friend, you have at least two slingers or archers, and hopefully one or two melee units to assist. Warriors generally are pretty good and cheap, but if you befriend a military city-state, you might luck into something even better, like a spearman or a chariot archer. Don't forget to build friends, allies, and trade, and maybe even stab them in the back later on once you catch up. My next tip is about districts, but in particular, I want to draw your attention to the Ancestral Hall. However, stick around to the end of the video because I have some more tips on districts waiting for you there. Once you build the Government Plaza, unlocked before political philosophy in the civics tree, you gain access to these wonderful districts. I personally like to build my Government Plaza as quickly as possible if I don't forget, and equip it with the Ancestral Hall, like you saw me do just then. The Ancestral Hall is great because it will really help to snowball your early empire building, by getting your settlers out faster. If you combine it with some uh, potentially policy cards that you get through something like oligarchy or political philosophy, or government and governor promotions like Magnus's promotions, for example, that help you build settlers faster and maintain food surplus in cities, you can push out settlers very quickly with your government plaza and it has the doubling effect of adding extra loyalty so you won't lose your cities in the process. My next tip is about building better and faster. This is my number one tip for any player new or old in Civilization VI, the ultimate production hack. It's done with builders, crucially by clearing forests. You might want to do it on forest tiles that you're not going to rely on later. So this example, build doing it right next to my city, is perhaps not the best one, but for this use case it works. You can see at the moment I'm getting 12 production on my city of Arkin. It's early game. By removing this forest, I've added 23 production. I have removed one production from that tile, so keep that in mind, you might want to do it to tiles like these on the fringes of your cities. However, very useful addition of a bonus 23 production, that's two turns worth. You might have noticed it instantly completed my commercial hub, which was great for me because now I can potentially start to add more trade routes and make more money, and who doesn't love money? You are essentially getting builders by either building them with industry, buying them with money, or purchasing them with faith, and using them to convert your resources into industry by chopping woods. Chopping woods is the best tip for industry in Civilization VI. Quick industry. You can also use your builders to remove other natural features as well though. Don't forget you might want to remove some unimproved wheat that could be in the way of where you're going to build a district in future. That will pump a lot of food into your city and help you snowball your populations. Make sure though that you're not just using all of your builders to chop down every single forest, even though you can plant them later in the game, it pays to keep some around for improvements like lumber mills, defensive bonuses, so on and so forth. Don't forget though, ultimately, to use your builders and convert them into industry or production. Finally here, I'd like to talk bonus tips on building an empire. Throughout this video, I've given you tips from building the best districts, how to create extra production, how to build a basic defensive army, and what I would recommend you compose within it. All of these tips though, and I'd encourage you to look at them from a wider level, have helped you build a strong empire. Defense, good districts, high yields, all of these things together have combined to do just that. I have a few more lightning fast quick bonus tips here for you that I either want to reinforce or reintroduce at the end of the video. Firstly, your early districts are very powerful and you can use early faith and pantheons or builders to really stimulate them along. Don't also forget these wonders. You might not want to invest in a lot of them and they can be a little more complicated, but key wonders like Petra in desert cities, St. Basil's Cathedral in tundra cities, and a whole load of others that provide powerful benefits can be worth investing in, although don't forget that they can only be built once. Okay? You cannot build them if someone else has, so pick and choose them carefully would be my tips there. And my final closing thoughts on building a powerful empire is to spread out far and wide. I have a guide on my channel already on how amenities and entertainment that Civilization VI's take on Civ V's happiness works. You'll need that and food to build an empire, and of course, 
settlers. So don't be afraid to land grab as quickly as you can. And thank you very much for watching the Civilization 6 Guide Tips video. I'll see you in the next one.